inexpensive Cabernet Sauvignon is what I tend to get a little bit scared of. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. My name's Matthew Horky. For the last six years, I've been traveling around the world, visiting wine regions in search of the most unique, exciting, and expensive wines in the world. But that's not what today is all about. Today, I'm tasting boxed wines. In the past, boxed wines didn't have that great of a reputation. In recent years, I've tasted some excellent wines out of the box from some small, well-known producers and even large cooperatives. The best box wines I've generally had are from Europe. All these wines are American brands from American grapes. I live in Europe a lot of the year. If there is a brand that I like, I will buy box wine. Buy a three liter box, throw it in the fridge, I'm good to go. However, I'm going to see if any of these box wines can please a wine snob. First up, a brand that everybody knows. This is the Barefoot Pinot Grigio Wine to Go. $4.49. This also comes in a huge big box. This is 500 milliliters, so we're talking about two thirds of a bottle of wine. Four out of these six wines are available in big, large formats. I get all six wines in Tetra Packs because I don't intend to drink them all, unless they're really good. A lot of the argument about box wine is it's more eco-friendly. I don't know, yes and no. I mean, these are coated with plastic, they have plastic bladders, you know, is that as eco-friendly? Yes, glass costs more to ship, but you can also recycle it. I remember when I first started getting into wine, I was drinking a lot of Pinot Grigio. I thought it was being classy, I thought it was so unique because it wasn't Chardonnay or Sauvignon Blanc. Fun fact, you know Pinot Grigio is actually a red skin, gray skin grape? Pinot Grigio, Grigio in Italian means gray. It goes by the name of Pinot Gris in France, which also means gray. Pinot Grigios generally don't have a lot of color because they separate the skin from the flesh and juice. I haven't had this wine probably in 15 years. It smells pretty boring, baked apple type of flavors. I don't think it, to me, smells like a high quality Pinot Grigio. It smells like kind of like a generic white wine. It's not terrible. There's definitely a, a little bit of sweetness there. It doesn't taste like chemicals, which is which is making me happy, but would I, would I buy it? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> Next up, we have everybody's favorite box wine brand, Franzia. I think this is the first brand I actually knew. This is the Chardonnay. This does not have a vintage. $2.99 for two-thirds of a bottle. Oh, it even has the sweetness level on here. It says it's going to be dry to medium dry, medium body. Let's see. A little bit scared about this. Chardonnay gets poo-pooed on a lot. You know, a lot of people will say ABC, anything but Chardonnay. But Chardonnay is responsible for some of the world's greatest wines. White Burgundy is made from Chardonnay. There are some great Chardonnays I've tasted all over from South Africa, Australia, even Serbia, California, Oregon. I haven't had, Fran I don't think I've had Franzia since I was like, <laughs> really long time ago. I expect it to just be sweet. This actually smells like wine. Pineapple type flavors, yellow peach, a little bit of flour. Here's the thing though, with lesser quality wines, the more that you leave them in the glass, the more the flavors start to fall apart. They start to just dissipate. Higher quality wine usually gets more complex with time in the glass. It smelled pretty good at first, now it's starting to fall apart. This says it's more on the dryness scale. I got really excited when I first smelled this out, when I first took a whiff of this. Now that all that's in my mouth is just a little bit of sugar and then all fruit disappears. I don't know. Don't recommend that. Don't recommend. Don't like that at all. <laughs> Next up, we have another brand I've never heard of before. Liberty Creek Chardonnay from California. Enjoy chilled. $3.79 for this. It does not come in a large pack. Gluten-free? Cheaper, more inexpensive Chardonnay is usually flavored to to just taste a little bit sweeter, have some vanilla type flavors. Uh, let's take a look at this. This smells like chemical and cardboard. This doesn't smell good at all. It literally smells like my dad owns a big farm. We have lots of boxes. It smells like a box house. On the palate, just tastes like oak boxes. I don't know, maybe lovely people, but uh, no. <laughs> mm. I think the Pinot Grigio here is the only one of the whites that I would actually drink. Next is White Zinfandel. This is Vendange. White Zinfandel, no vintage, 11% alcohol, $2.89. Uh, 11% alcohol, so I would think it's going to be a little sweeter. A lot of times, the lower the alcohol, the sweeter the wine is. Sugar is what ferments and turns into alcohol. 
If the alcohol isn't as high, that means there's some residual sugar left over. Zinfandel is actually a red grape, makes some fabulous wines. I remember even with my wine geek friend once, I was talking about a great red Zinfandel, and he said, what? Zinf Zinfandel makes red wines? White Zinfandel came about by an accident, and people tend to like it because it's a little bit sweet. This is the wine I'm most scared of tasting. This smells like a rotten watermelon Jolly Rancher, if that even makes sense. And some cardboard. <laughs> To me, that doesn't even taste like wine. It tastes like some kind of juice. Look, I know some people are gonna like this. I mean, no. <laughs> Do not recommend. Mm. Palettes of people that work in wine or really love wine versus a general consumer can be so different. That's why a lot of general consumers find it hard to digest wine information. So they're drinking this kind of stuff. And all the power to you if you are, but not good for me. <laughs> oh. Next, we have the Black Box Merlot from California. This actually has a vintage, 2019. This comes in a big box, 70 gold medals. Why enthusiast best buys? Merlot's demise is often because of its own success. People started to like it, so a lot of people in California started to plant a lot of it. Then the film Sideways came out. I am not drinking any fucking Merlot! Some people say they don't like Merlot because a lot of times they're drinking cheap and expensive stuff, but it makes some of the greatest and some of the most expensive wines in the world. And when done well, it is just a phenomenal grape. Merlot. In fact, some of the greatest red wines I've ever had have been Merlot-based wines. This smells okay. It smells like a simple red wine. You know, subtle cherry juice type of flavors, a little bit of vanilla. Very plain, very basic red. Doesn't smell like awful. Oh. <laughs> On the palate, it's like I'm eating this table. Oh. High quality wines are aged in wood, oak barrels that impart oak flavor. They also allow a small amount of oxygen to kind of come in and, and soften the wine up. Oak barrels are expensive, so cheap wines, you use oak chips or you stick big oak blocks, oak staves into the wine to impart that flavor. That's what this tastes like. I was hoping it'd be good, but um, no, don't recommend. Next up, we have the Bota Box or the Bota Mini Cabernet Sauvignon. Best buys, wine enthusiasts, top 50. This has a $3.99. Does this have a vintage on it? No vintage. Inexpensive Cabernet Sauvignon is what I tend to get a little bit scared of. Usually can just taste like vanilla. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's in here. It smells like sour cherry sour plum juice. That's basically what this smells like. It's probably the least bad out of these reds and rosés, but not something I would buy. I know there can be some excellent box wines out there, but if you're on a budget, maybe you want to drink something a little bit better, go to a local wine shop. Ask for different types of wine. Maybe show them a budget. They will guide you to the right direction. Wine people love to talk. For inexpensive white wines, I think Italy is doing a lot of great work for inexpensive whites. Spain for reds, Italy and France even. Cote du Rhone from the south of France. Wonderful wines can be under 10 bucks. You can get some wonderful Sangioveses Barberas from Italy. Spain, especially in the regions of Humilla and Yecla in south of Spain. Those are big red wines. And while we're in the region, let's not forget the Alentejo in Portugal. Tremendous value. My favorite wine of this box tasting is the Barefoot Pinot Grigio. Um, it was the least offensive out of all these wines, but... Uh, Again, it doesn't matter what I say. If you like it, you've got to trust your own palate. Oh. 